Hello and welcome to the Sanders Review. My name is Caleb Sanders and if you're new to this channel, please like, comment, subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Today's video is related to a new show coming out called Shogun that is based off of the best-selling novel by James Clavell. I read Shogun multiple times in high school, the last time being back in college. I don't own a physical copy anymore. This video, I really want to focus on my memory of Shogun from high school and college when I read it because I loved it so much. And going into watching the show, I'm hoping to really enjoy it. And I'm going to be rereading the book as well. So I'll have another video coming after the show completes so that I can have some reflections after watching the show and rereading the book uh, and hopefully have some fresh perspective on that. Along with talking about the story of Shogun, I want to look at the history surrounding the book. I'm not an expert, but I do have my master's in world history with my secondary emphasis in actually the history of Japan in the era of the samurai into the Meiji Restoration, the modernization era of Japan. So I have a few knowledgeable points from that time period. I also teach AP World History, and this is an era that I talk to my students a lot about because of its significance to East Asian and world history. And with the new show coming out on February 27th, uh, maybe this is something that you will find interesting in understanding the context around this book and this show. I'm going to try my best not to have any spoilers in this review video, but there will be some themes that I discuss that might give some insight into elements of the show. So just be aware of that. I don't think this is going to spoil the show at all. I hope it'll actually enrich the show for anybody who's going to watch this. James Clavell, the author of Shogun, is very famous for many things outside of writing his best-selling novels. Born an Australian uh, British citizen, he was a World War II veteran and a POW, which that actually informed some of his later writings. His first novel he actually wrote was in 1962 called King Rat. I've read that as well. It's a very interesting read about a World War II uh, Japanese prison of war camp. And he based a lot of that off his experiences, and it's a very stark look at what a World War II Japanese POW camp would look like. Uh, definitely recommend that read. It's a very interesting book and it's in the middle of what he calls his Asian saga. Starting in 1972, James Clavell spent three years researching and writing Shogun. To date, Shogun has sold over 15 million copies, a number which I expect to increase dramatically with the new show, which I hope is a success. The story of Shogun starts with an Englishman named John Blackthorne whose ship shipwrecks on the islands of Japan. John Blackthorne is part of a ship of Englishmen who are exploring and trying to find a way to East Asia. At this point in history, uh, the Portuguese and the Spanish control most of the main routes to East Asia and the rest of Europe is trying to find ways to reach Asia. And John Blackthorne and his crew, John Blackthorne is the navigator if I remember, and they find a way through the Strait of Magellan and are able to cross the Pacific and reach Japan where they then are shipwrecked. And that is where the story starts with a bedraggled English crew washing up on shore and being taken captive by the samurai of a local village. Shogun shows through a series of events how the Japanese of this time period really viewed outsiders, sometimes as a source of resources and of technology, but often through mistrust because of the outside ideas and just xenophobia that the Japanese had for things that were non-Japanese at this time. The book really highlights Japanese society and culture of the time in the early 1600s. And an example of this, if I remember, was John Blackthorne being surprised that the Japanese would take baths multiple times a week, if not every day, saying that he believed that baths were something to only come a couple times a year because dirt protects the skin from disease. Just kind of showing that clash of European and non-Western ideas at this time and highlighting how backwards Europe was in many ways at the time period. Blackthorn and the other survivors from the wrecked English ship are eventually given over to the local warlord, a guy named Toranaga, who is one of the main powers in Japan at this time. From what I remember this book, it follows a series of adventures of Blackthorn and Toranaga as Blackthorn explores and experiences what Japanese culture and political intrigue has to offer, especially with the interaction of Japan with the English's enemies, the Portuguese, who were the, at this point, the only presence in Japan. And Blackthorn and the Portuguese, especially the Portuguese monks, come at odds multiple times throughout this book. And Toranaga sees Blackthorn as a resource to help maybe try to grow his own power base. In this story as well, you have a forbidden romance between Blackthorn and a married Japanese woman who is, if I remember, very unhappily married to her samurai husband. 
and that becomes a main point when as you explore Japanese romance, Japanese society through that lens as well. Uh, and that I can't give any spoilers for, but that is a key part of Blackthorn's journey of rising up into Japanese society through his relationships with Toranaga and through his Japanese love interest. I really don't want to give any spoilers to the ending of this book, just in case you want to either read the book or watch the show. I really hope the show is faithful to a lot of what the book had to offer, because the book, as a product of its time, is a somewhat romanticized view of Japanese society, but it really stuck to the themes of Japanese history from this time period. I want to take a little bit and jump into the history surrounding the world of Shogun, the real life world that the story takes place in. Shogun takes place in the time period in Japan called the Sengoku period or the Warring States period where for almost a century Japan has been through a series of civil wars and conflicts with rising escalation between different powers and growing even the size of armies which is causing changes to Japanese culture, society, and political elements all throughout the nation and is really at a tipping point when this world of the Shogun takes place. Armies during the Warring States period, instead of being in the hundreds of samurai fighting each other with mostly bows and arrows, uh, the samurai sword is the icon of Japanese history. But for a lot of the history, the samurai warriors, they actually favored the bow. And so they were smaller armies. But the Warring States period saw the rise of peasant armies in the tens of thousands uh, in rising military conflicts with different leaders vying for power at this time period. Japan was broken up into a bunch of different provinces which would be ruled by daimyo. These are regional warlord governors and they would have samurai retainers that would serve under them and they would be paid in what was called koku. Uh, a ko one koku would be enough to feed one person for a year and so if you were a 50 koku samurai you would have enough wealth to support your own retainers and your own vassals underneath you and so the daimyo would be at the head of society at this time. The shogun would be at the very top as the supreme military warlord, and the daimyo would be subservient to the shogun. The shogun would be like the first among the daimyo, uh, and it would be a family line that would rule sometimes for centuries. Japan did have an emperor at this time period who was kind of a figurehead. He was believed to be descended from the sun goddess Amaterasu, who would be the main chief kami of the Japanese native Shinto religion. The character of Toranaga in Shogun is a direct reference to a real-life historic character named Tokugawa Ieyasu, who was one of the daimyo who served under a previous warlord. That previous warlord named Toyotomi Hideyoshi, when he died, his son was set to take his place as ruler over all of Japan, and as the son was a young child, was a young boy, uh, there was a council of rulers who were supposed to cancel each other out and check each other and keep balance of power so that eventually Toyotomi Hideyoshi's son would be able to come to power and seize the reins of control. And that is the world that Shogun takes place in. As I said, I don't want to go into really too much of the history of the conflict that takes place because that gives some spoilers to the story of Shogun. But one important thing to understand about the world of Japan at this time period that Shogun takes place is is the influence of the Western powers. Portugal at this time was one of the main powers that was through trade expanding influence and dominance into Eastern Asia. There was a series that were called the Black Ships. They were the only ones that were allowed to trade with Japan. And along with the trade that happened, you have the influence of Christianity, you have the influence of missionaries and of Western culture. And so with this influence of the West, you have Japan at a tipping point where you actually have tens of thousands of Christian Japanese, many of them samurai and daimyo, and the balance of power of traditional Japanese life with Western influenced Japanese elements are coming into conflict with each other. Shogun does an amazing job at highlighting the Japanese world at this point. And without spoilers, I just want to say that the culminating battle that is referenced is iconic in Japanese history. There are dozens of Japanese films highlighting the culmination of the world of Shogun. The Book of Shogun actually was made into a miniseries back in, I believe it was the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I've watched that years ago when I was back in high school and college. And if I remember, it did a pretty good job, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the new Shogun show has to offer. 
I hope that this video has maybe piqued your interest a little bit into the world of the samurai at this, this turning point in Japanese history from the warring states period leading into the next period of a shogunate that lasts for 250 years until Japan modernizes and becomes an industrialized nation. And James Clavell, he actually, through his research, you can tell that he maybe didn't base his book off of previous works, but you can definitely tell some previous works that may have influenced the world that he writes about. If the story of Shogun, either the book or the TV series, really interests you, I highly recommend that you pick up a five book series by a very famous Japanese author. The five book Musashi series has well over 125 million copies sold worldwide, which is a dwarfs the amount of books sold by even Shogun. This is written by a man named Eiji Yoshikawa, and it was published back in 1935. So this is, for its time period, uh, very significant, right? Going into the time period of World War II, and this was seen as a look back at the very famous time period of Japanese history. The samurai of the Musashi books, his name was Miyatomi Musashi, and he is very famous also for writing a book called The Book of Five Rings. This book is seen as a masterpiece of the psychology and of the mental aspect of what it meant to be a samurai in the early 1600s, the shift from the Warring States period into a stable governing system. If you like this era of Japanese history, I highly recommend checking out the five book Musashi series. Uh, it drags at times, but it really does a good job of highlighting the samurai ethos of this time period, at least the idealized ethos of the 1900s Japan looking back on its era of history. Another book that James Covell had to have read and understood the time period as he was writing his book is a book called Silence by Shusako Endo. Uh, this had a recent movie adaptation with Adam Driver and Liam Neeson. And this book is a very interesting read. This book is about a couple of Catholic missionaries who are smuggled into Japan to try to bolster the flagging Christian groups throughout Japan that are experiencing persecution from the shogunate. And it has a very interesting conversation about what it means for Japan with this Western religion that is being uh, incorporated into Japanese society in some ways, at least in terms of kind of an underground church. And it has some very interesting philosophical conversations, which is a very interesting read, which I think everybody should pick up uh, at some point if you love this time period of Japanese history. The story of Shogun is amazing in memory and Japanese history is even more fascinating if you couldn't tell my passion for it from being a teacher, <laughs> kind of highlighting these time periods. But from memory, the story of Shogun, I'm gonna give a 4.5. Let's see if that is through rose-colored glasses. Uh, maybe after I watch the show and reread the book, that will change either more or less. I usually don't like going back and rereading things that I love from high school, but with the show coming out, I feel like I really need to. That's it for me today. I really hope you enjoyed this movie. If you stuck to the end, please, like I said, comment, subscribe, like this series. I'm hoping to increase my viewership, not for uh, any personal gain, except for just connecting with people who love stories and books like I do. Uh, please, if you're interested, go ahead and check up here for my very first video where I introduce myself and a lot of the books that I love to read and review. And up here is my spoiler-free review of a very famous book that came out last year called The Will of the Many. So thank you very much. God bless, and we'll talk to you later.